Hi there, I'm Dave Carger here at the Entertainment Weekly and People Video Studio at the Toronto International Film Festival. What a pleasure it is for me to be here with Tyler Perry, Miss Debbie Allen, and the entire cast, essentially, of the Jasmine's Blues. Great to see you all. Good to see you as well. Thank you for having us. Uh, Mr. Perry, you wrote this film, you directed it. This is the first script you ever wrote about 25 years ago, I think. 27 now, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What caused you to never give up on the idea of this film being made? You know, I, I knew that I had to be intentional in everything that I was doing. So I was building a studio. I was, I was uh, building a, a, a company. So I had to have all these shows that I knew my audience wanted to see. And for many years, I always wanted to do this. We even talked about doing this over 20 years ago, De Debbie and I. And, but I knew that I had a, 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 a goal to reach. And once I reached that goal and found a place where I, I was secure, I felt like, you know, let me go back and do some of the things that I love. And Jazz Man was at the top of that list for sure. Wow. The original idea, as I understand it, Mr. Perry, was for you to maybe even star in the film back when you originally wrote it. So Joshua, for you in taking the lead role, is that scary at all to know that <laughs> your director once envisioned himself in the part? Um, this better be a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't scary in that, like, for him to say yes to me, essentially, I, I felt his trust, you know. And not only that, but I, I feel like I have a lot to give that I want to give to this work. And um, for him to say yes, it only charged me up. It gave me more confidence. And... Um, it was a blessing to work with him and working this, through this process, so yeah. Saleya, as the female lead in the film, when we first meet your character and Joshua's, you are 16 and 17 years old. Yeah. How do you channel? That's why I couldn't play it. <laughs> that was the only reason. Right, I get it, I get it. If you do, so 52, 53 next week. What was it like for you to channel your inner 16-year-old, Saleya? I mean, it was a joy, I think, when... She's 17. I, yeah, I'm just, I, yeah, I just had my sweet 16, so it was pretty easy. No, it was uh, when, when Josh and I first got together, um, before we started shooting, we were both really on the same page about how the young love, the pure young love, was really the soul of this story. And if we didn't get that right, then the rest of it was, you know, we, we need the audience to buy us. And so we focused on that. We were like, how do we infuse this with joyful youth and then we had such amazing production design I put on that wig and I was a different person I will tell you that I put on those dresses and I felt like a different person and when you have such amazing designers on your team it just it does so much of the work for you and so all I had to do was focus on that youthful joy and that pure love and everyone else made it so easy if I can get a little bit serious here for a second Lana because I'm looking at you your mother and daughter in the in the film, and your character delivers to me what to me was one of the most shocking moments, where you're a character who is passing as white, and you refer to a black man with a word starting with an M that I don't feel comfortable saying, and it's a very very shocking moment, and I think it's going to be eye opening for a lot of people because you see racism in its typical form, but you also see it in this kind of colorism form through your character, what was that like to deliver and what do you think people are gonna respond to that? Uh, well, it was a, a very difficult moment to be part of and you know, when I was cast as Ethel, uh, I had to do a lot of introspection, I had to do a lot of research to try to understand why she made the decisions that she made. And you know, what it boils down to is that she felt that she was doing the right thing in her life and you know the real villain is a system who puts people in that position to have to make those decisions in the first place but as, as the actor it was you know i just had to really lean into this is ethel this is not lana right you know milana what kind of conversations do you recall having with the members of your cast on the set of this movie because this film does bring up so many interesting topics what kind of conversations um well, I, I think it was just that we were all on the same page. Um, our mission was to bring light, not just obviously to the story, but to our own assets so that it could be the collaborative work that you see. Is We all love art and we all love the theater and that's the thing that I think you see reflected mm. in the final performance is that we brought everything and we left it there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Austin, your character is Joshua's character's brother. 
um, could have been perceived as kind of the standard villain, but you bring some shadings to him that are really interesting. What was important for you to bring across in your performance as, as him? Uh, exactly what you just said. I think, you know, I wanted to make sure that he wasn't this two-dimensional villain and he wasn't written that way. You know, there was, there was a lot of room I saw very early on for, for nuance and for pain and for all of these other really, you know, human, human dimensions. So I just wanted to create as much of an authentic three-dimensional human being as I could and bring that to the story and kind of like Lana said, show that the real villain of this story in a lot of ways is the system, is racism at that time, is you know, the circumstances that all these characters found themselves in. And then you know, obviously choices were made and there are you know, personalities that, that differ and everything. But I just wanted to really create the most authentic character I could. And Ryan, in a similar way, you play kind of the manager of the music career of these two brothers. I don't want to say too much about your character because I want the audience to learn about him. But he does have something of a surprising backstory. What was your reaction when you read the character and, and thought about playing him? Well, that's, I remember getting uh, size before getting a script and just reading this speech that Tyler had written about his experience in, in Germany in the, you know, late 30s, early 40s, which, you know, I think is pretty clear what that may be about. And um, it was just a beautiful, beautiful script about loss and acceptance and uh, the best way to help someone, the best way forward, um, how much, uh, you know, you can and can't do and sort of as a, it was a lesson in, you know, Josh's character's arc in that story, in that moment that he needed to sort of keep going. Um, but yeah, it made me dig into my own past and my own family and learn some things about, you know, my grandparents leaving Austria and things like that. So um, yeah, it was an amazing opportunity to, to, to tell that story. Let me turn to the two women in front of me who are responsible for so much of the great kind of song and dance aspects of this film. Uh, Amira, you just put me in the same category. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Sha, right where are you go. Uh, Amir, I'm going to admit my ignorance here, and I apologize. I don't know if we're hearing you sing or if it's someone else, and you're, it's you. It's you. I did the singing for Amira. That was that was me. We don't like to talk about it. As a talented woman. You have a fabulous singing voice. What, were those just super fun scenes to do? They were. You know, it's so funny because as I was listening. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, you know, we're in the theater. Always in the theater. Nobody needs a mic. Nobody needs a microphone. Uh, no, but it's so. It's a, listen. Tyler has such a beautiful way of writing. It, it, it is multidimensional, but we're talking about all this history, and there's so much tragedy. But mm. what I love about Hattie May's storyline is, you know, even when you know Ira Ryan's character <laughs> asks, you know, do you have any desire to go north? And she goes, Oh no, sir. Not you know, on your life. not on your. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> not, no ad lib in here. Not on your life. <laughs> but the but the beauty of that is that we see her, she has created, she has carved out a safe place where she, it's a love of also not only this relationship, but community. Mm -hmm. And we get to really celebrate that in the Jew mm -hmm. joint. Mm -hmm. We see that Hattie's safest place is there. And she said, I don't need anything more. I need a place where I can be my children mm -hmm. with all of their truth. I don't have to put on any kind of facade. We can be raw and they accept us. They love us. We can kick our shoes off. We can be fancy. We can laugh. We can smoke a cigarette. We can sing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's a beautiful mm -hmm. place to exist. And it all happens in the movie. And it just warmed my heart to see in the credits choreography by Debbie yeah. Allen. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the energy that you were hoping to impart with your work and your numbers in this film? Well, I was, I've been trained by some of the greatest from... Uh, Ailey to Norma Miller, who was actually the queen of the uh, Savoy Ballroom back in the day at 15 years old. She taught me how to swing. So I learned the authentic. And so I was excited when Tyler called me and asked me to do it because I really don't choreograph for anyone anymore. But for him, yes. Mm -hmm. And this was such a treasure. I knew of the script. I'd, I'd read it many years ago. And uh, the timing right now was perfect, mm -hmm. right now, because what happens in the black community defines America. It's like hip-hop culture. Mm -hmm. 
it is like the Ebola virus is everywhere. You can't stop it. And in this period of time, we're on the heels of the Harlem Renaissance, mm -hmm. where the most dynamic artists came out, you know, from County Cullen, Langston North, Zora Neale, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. uh, Billie Holiday. I mean, it's a long laundry list. So these characters are authentic in terms of where they're trying to go and what their, their appetite is and what their suppression is. And right now, right now, in this moment in America, to do a movie like this, a period piece, that can make us all enjoy it, have pull our heartstrings, but at the end of the day, think about, is this the America we're going back to? Mm -hmm. That is so amazing. So the choreography, you know, we dance through a lot of things. We dance through pain. We dance for everything. And in the movie, we do it as well. Tyler is brilliant the way he wrote this. There's a, a scene where there's a birth and mm. an African. I mean, it is just <laughs> juxtaposed. Yes, I love that moment. Yes, with the, that the was African all dancing. his idea. Just mm. had to do it. One quick last thing for you before we go. I'm so intrigued to hear you say this was the most fun you've had directing when you consider the kind of raucous comedies that you've directed in the past and the dramas but I would think this wouldn't be as fun because it was so heavy were you surprised that this was as fun as it was well, well it's, it's the thing I enjoyed the most everything else was work everything else was the necessity this was the labor of love this was the thing that I'd held on to for all those years so every frame I wanted it to be like a photograph and having a great DP like Brett Pollock and, and, and getting a chance to work with all these incredibly talented people, Terrence Blanchard and Miss Debbie Allen and this cast, I thought, okay, this could not have come together any other way other than divine order. So I was very happy every day on set. It happened at the right time. Yeah. 27 yeah. years later. 27 and we, years later. we parted on set, I want you to know. Yeah. Oh, this one right here is the last yeah. MC. Yeah. The last <laughs> MC. <Yeah. laughs> Well, thank you for assembling this group on film, and today it's great to see you. You did all. great. This is a big group to talk to. You did really great. You did really good. Keep it going. This is Jasmine's Blues. It's on Netflix next week. On the 23rd of September. That's right. That's right. See ya. September 23rd. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you.